Hi, so here's our goal. We want to get to the point where we have written example, what, what corresponds to example 5.2 if you're following on the book. So if I run this example, we see this is hello world box 2D. We've got boxes coming out of a point. They're falling, they're responding to physics, they're colliding, they're bouncing off of these platforms. All of the physics in this example are being controlled by box 2D. The, if you look through the code, you'll see all we're doing is asking where's the location, what are the angles, and drawing everything on the screen. So how are we going to get there? So here is our exercise. We're going to back up and I'm going to show you, look at example 5.1. What is example 5.1? It is a very simple processing sketch. We have an, a, an empty array list of box objects. Every frame we add a new box object. And so here we can see I'm adding these box objects. What we, our exercise here is to give these box objects physics. So let's look at the code for these box objects. These box objects have, oh, I already typed this in there. Ah, erase that. These box objects have an x and a y and a width and a height. They're static and a display method. That's it. If you kind of rewind yourself all the way back to the beginning of this video series, this is what we were doing. We said, aha, aha. We want to add location, velocity, acceleration, an apply force function, an update method where velocity goes into location, acceleration goes into velocity. We started to write all the code for the physics. Now we're going to take a different approach. Instead of writing all the code for the physics inside of this class, we're going to store a reference to a physics object that comes from Box2D. What is that physics object? It's, I had typed it in here before. It's a body. Body. So instead of location, velocity, acceleration, we get a body. The body has all of that in it. The body updates itself. It figures out if it's colliding with things. We don't have to implement any of that. We just want a reference to that body. That body is going to have to be given an initial position, an xy, and a size, but then it's going to be updated through Box2D. So this is kind of a new way of thinking. It's like an object within an object. Like our object is a box, but our box object, really what it is, it's a reference to a box 2D body. So there are different approaches here. And when we get to toxic libs, we're actually going to see a different approach to this kind of thing. <laughs> um, but this is the approach we're taking right now. So the question becomes, first and foremost, how do we make this body object? And unfortunately, the answer to this question is, is, is somewhat of a nightmare. And there's a lot of steps involved. And the code is a lot of syntax, a lot of methods, and things to remember. And I don't know that there's any way that you would be able to complete this exercise. You, know, you could look, try to look up the reference of the documentation. So what I'm going to do is talk through the steps to initializing this box 2D body. It's four or five steps. We're going to talk through those without code. And then I'm going to look at the code implementation of that and point out where you will sort of where the reference is to kind of look up where all these functions are and what are all the parameters. But there's no way to kind of, I think, easily go through all of it. I tried that in a previous video and I didn't think it was very good. So anyway, here we are. So let's, so this is our job right now. We need to initialize this body. So I'm going to talk you through the steps of how to initialize a box 2D body. Okay, so step one, create a body definition. Create a, and I'm going to call it body def. So this is a body definition, um, but the actual object we're going to create from box 2D, from JBox 2D, is called body def. Now this is kind of a strange thing. Uh, didn't we say we wanted to create a body? This is just the way box 2D and lots of things work. In order to create a body, we need to create a, de a body definition. And from that body definition, we'll make a body object. So it's just kind of the organizational principle that we're working under. In theory, you could make multiple bodies from one body definition, but we're not worrying about that right now. OK, so create a body definition. Now, the body definition is where you set two really key parameters to the body. One is simply, and there's a bunch of things, its initial position. So where is it going to start in the world? It needs an initial position. Um, the other thing we're going to give it is a type. Type is very important. We're going to see three options. Uh, I guess I'll write these down for you. Dynamic. Static, I spelled that wrong, and kinematic. What are these three types? Well, to start, everything is basically going to be dynamic. A dynamic body is one that moves in response to physics. That's what we want. We want a body that moves in response to physics. If you remember, though, in that example 5.2, there are those platforms that the boxes are landing on. Those are static bodies. A static body is kind of an artificial thing. It's a fixed body that can never be moved, which is useful in lots of worlds you might want to make. 
Kinematic is kind of a funny thing and we'll get to it hopefully, I don't actually have it on my list, but we should get to it in a later video. There are often times where you want a user controlled object in the physics world, right? We know we want static objects, ones that just move and respond to physics, but you might have one that's controlled by the mouse or controlled by your, the, you know, your hand in a computer vision tracking system. So that is a kinematic body. So when we create that body definition, we need to set the position and the type. And we'll see that in, in, in when we look at the code implementation. Number two, we now need to create the body. So this is simple. This is just going to be one line of code once we've defined the body and all of its parameters. And there's other parameters as well you can define. Like you can give it initial velocity and certain things. But we're just looking at um, these two right now. Then we can create that body object. So what's the funny thing about a Box2D body? So if this is our Box2D world, we can think of the Box2D body as like boop. A little tiny dot. It's emptiness. It had, it's nothing. It's just this sort of point, singular point that moves throughout the space. The magic of Box2D, the wonderfulness about Box2D is that, uh, there are, that, that bodies have geometry. But bodies actually, bodies don't have geometry, but we can attach geometry to a body. We can give it a shape. So the next thing we need to do is create a shape. The shape is what is going to define what that body looks like, how it responds to collisions, what is the form that it's actually taking. The, the bo body is just the sort of empty soul, and the shape is the form that is attached to that soul, if that makes any sense. So um, when we create the shape, we can create a number of different kinds of shapes. Um, just some examples are polygon shape. That's what we're going to start with. A polygon shape can be an, an, any arbitrary polygon with any arbitrary set of vertices, or it can be something like a box with a width and a height. Um, another kind of shape that we can create is a circle shape. Sorry. So if we have circular objects, <laughs> you can imagine what that is. We're going to use, we're going to create a circle shape. There are other things too. One that just jumps to my mind right now is chain shape. And we'll look at some examples of a chain shape. A chain shape is something you might use for a, a surface, like a terrain in a two-dimensional world. Um, so there are different kinds of shapes. And once we create that and define that shape, what needs to happen is that shape needs to be attached to the body. So the body experiences the physics. Location, velocity, acceleration, uh, it gets forces applied to it. The shape is the geometry attached to that body. The way we attach a shape to a body, I know this is super exciting, right? Um, is a fixture. So we need to create a fixture. A fixture you can think of as the glue that binds the shape to the body. The interesting thing about the fixture is the fixture is the place where we get to set some other physics parameters, notably, density, friction, and restitution. Density, friction, and restitution. So density, you can imagine, if an object is more dense, it's going to be more, it's going to have a higher mass based on how big it is. So density can affect the behavior of something by making it have a kind of weightier feel to it in the physics world. Friction is just how much friction does that body experience when it comes into contact with another, uh, sorry, does that shape experience when it comes into contact with another shape? And restitution, you can think of as elasticity or bounciness. So if, you, if you're dropping if I had a, a nice little um, you know, basketball or something and I were to drop it, how much would it bounce off the floor versus how much would it sort of just land with a thud and not bounce back up? So, and I'm dropping things out. I caught it. Okay, so these are all the parameters we get to define when we create this fixture. And the very last step, which if I'm still on the board here, is kind of put it all together. And I'll just write that out here. Put it all together. Putting it all together means use the fixture to attach the shape to the body. So if you recall, right, we started with this question of, I want my box object to, instead of me having to add location, velocity, acceleration, work at all the physics, I'm going to add a body to it. I'm just going to put a body object to it, and I need to, you know, probably in the constructor, initialize that body. So you would think that that would just be body equals new body x, y. Boom, I'm done. And it's just not that simple. Box2D requires a lot of steps to set up all the initial parameters about the body. Where is it? What kind is it? What's its shape? How is that shape attached? What are the physics parameters? And these are those steps. So these are those steps. So in the next video, what I want to do is actually look at how do we take each one of these steps 
and applied in code. So there isn't really a good exercise to go from this one to the next one, but one of the things I would say that you might take the time to do is go back and review now, go look at that Box2D manual. So go back and look at the link to the Box2D manual, read the little section about the body, read the section about shapes, read the section about fixtures, and see if, that, if any of this kind of like is starting to gel into your head. And in the next video, we're gonna look at each one of these steps in code and, and see the example really happen. Okay.